Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Farah, and today I wanted to do a really quick book review of a book I just finished called Hello Beautiful, and this is by Anne Napolitano. So this book came out in 2023. It's a fairly new release, and it is a general fiction book, and it's a little under 400 pages, so it is a little bit long. This story is told in the third person point of view, and we're following the points of views of three main characters. We're following this guy named William, and we're following two sisters named Julia and Sylvie. Julia and Sylvie come from a big Italian-American family. They have four siblings. Well, there are four siblings. There's Julia, Sylvia, and then two twins, two younger twins named Emmeline and Cynthia. Their mom's name is Rose, the dad's name is Charlie. And we see what happens as William enters this family as Julia's boyfriend and uh, potential husband. So we start out with William's point of view and William, we learn very early on, suffered or he didn't suffer through a family trauma, but his parents did. They lost William's baby sister who was three years old when William was about a week old. So unfortunately due to that event, William grew up uh, in a very unhealthy household. His parents never really fully recovered from that accident that happened and uh, it really affected him in many, many ways, which the book goes on to explore how that, um, you know, having physical parents is not the same as having parents that are emotionally there for you. So it's, it's a, this book is definitely a study of characters and relationships rather than a hugely moving plot. So we follow William as he grows up and goes through college and he meets Julia. They meet at their university. So they start dating and Julia is a very type A personality. She's kind of a control freak. Well, kind of. She's a total control freak. She has her whole life planned out. She's the oldest sister. I mean, I hate to say typical first kid because uh, that's not always accurate, but in, in a stereotypical sense, she's kind of like the typical first kid. And uh, she's, she, her and William, you know, this is all right in the beginning. Her and William end up getting married and, uh, you know, she has this big wedding. She's just so happy with how life's working out. She has all these plans for him and all these plans for her. And William really embraces this relationship because it's the first time that he's really felt loved by other people. He's really felt such a warmth and an acceptance within this huge family. All of Julia's sisters really embrace him, the parents embrace him, and he just finally feels like he's part of an actual family. So he goes along with basically whatever Julia tells him. She wants him to go on and be a college professor. Now the one thing about William is that he's very tall. He's about six foot seven. I'll put the meters here. And he, he plays, he ends up playing basketball for his university, which he really loves, but he does have some issues with his knee. So he's on and off with the ability to play and kind of sit on the sidelines. So Sylvie is the third character and she's the second sister. And she's described as being kind of quiet, more introverted. She works at their local library. She's a hopeless romantic. She's constantly looking for her soulmate. She's, um, very introspective. She's very kind and sweet and she has a really, really great relationship with her dad, Charlie. So the book kind of focuses on what happens between these three main characters, what happens with the rest of the family, what it feels like to lose someone that's very close to you, how these little relationships can really impact you as a person. And so we have these three characters that are all very different from each other. Julia is married to William. Sylvie is her BFF sister. They're extremely close. All of these sisters are described as being very, very close. They do make a lot of references to little women throughout the book. And I think it's supposed to be kind of a, an homage to little women. I haven't read little women in at least 20 years, so I couldn't really attest to that. I would have to reread it again to know if it really, you know, had a lot of different um, parallels with that. But something from William's past kind of surfaces and an event that happens between William and Julia triggers this, these really deep feelings within him. So the book does talk a lot about uh, mental health and depression. And once that does come to light, we see if Julia and William's relationship is strong enough to go through that. What happens when things happen and sort of break this family bond apart? You know, what, what would be so horrible that would break this, this beautiful family of close sisters, close knit parents, or what are the kind of things that would cause that kind of reaction to occur? So like I said, it was very much a study into characters and relationships, sibling relationships, what it means to forgive someone and how long does it have to take to forgive someone? And do you really need to forgive them? Did they really do something that is that horrible and wrong? 
you know, this stubborn kind of hurt that creates rifts and judgments and uh, grudges within family members. And to me, it made, really made me think about, you know, what, what's worth it? What can really happen that would push siblings away from each other in that sense? I really liked how we see different thought processes and perspectives with someone that grows up with a lot of siblings versus someone that's an only child and how you can have different anxieties. So I personally do have a few siblings and we're all really, really close. And I do love having that. I love having a close relationship with them. But it does make me wonder what it's like for someone that doesn't have siblings, someone that's an only child, and what that might feel like to go through a parental loss or something like that. So that was an interesting thing that I liked reading about. It talks a lot about loving people for who they are and not what we want them to be. So loving somebody for who they already are, for exactly who they already are, their personalities, what they like to do, what their desires are, rather than trying to push our wants or our expectations on there. So that was a really interesting theme that I enjoyed reading about throughout the book. So I guess I would say my main criticism of the book is that the major event that happens to cause a rift within this family, well, two separate rifts, I guess I would say. I just, I couldn't agree with the fact that it was that bad, that it would cause that much of a rift, if you know what I'm saying. I don't wanna give away spoilers, but if these sisters are supposed to be as close as they are and this much happened because of this thing, I just, I couldn't relate to it. So it was really difficult for me to feel empathy towards the main character that, you know, was angry. It just, yeah, it rubbed me the wrong way. I couldn't get over that. As I read the rest of the book, I just couldn't, ah, I was so mad at her. I'm like, get over it, get counseling, you know? And that's coming from somebody who is, 20 years older than the characters in the book. So yeah, maybe in my 20s, if that happened to me, I would be angry like she was and I would... No, it wouldn't happen to me though. I would never treat my sister like that. <laughs> I don't know. I would love to know your thoughts. If you think that our main character, if you've read the book and you think our main character was justified in running away the way she did, or if you think it was ridiculous, I would love to know. So as I did think more about the book and kind of to put myself in her shoes i think the reason why it made me so upset was because i did have the privilege of being in a family with very very close siblings and we all get along and we all get along to this day and they're they're like my best friends we talk every day we text every day we have all the same interests so i just couldn't imagine that happening and us not speaking to each other anymore um but then again, I realize that not all families are like that. If you have siblings, not all siblings are close like that. And there can be things that happen that drive siblings apart. And that's just a reality. It's a different journey. So it, it did make me think a lot about that. And I was just interested in exploring why I had such a reaction to that. So overall, I thought the writing was very nice. Um, I thought the story ended pretty well. And it was a... It was a very good and sensitive look at mental health and depression. I will say that. I think she handled that in a really nice way. She mentioned medications throughout the book and psych psychiatric help, which is so important. I, I, I really liked how one of our characters did get the help that they needed and uh, it, was, it was treated really nicely. So overall, I would say this was a pretty good read. It was definitely, it didn't live up to the hype that I think it had before that. I'm assuming this is probably gonna make the Goodreads list um, in term, maybe not number one, but I'm pretty sure it'll be on the Goodreads list for this coming year. So definitely read the premise. If you like Little Women, if you like relationships about siblings, I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, but for me personally, it was just okay. I mean, I'm glad I read it though. Um, now we will get to the spoiler part of the video. Okay, so first of all, a couple things. Um, Julia, oh, I just, I could not get on with her. I was so angry with her and how she treated William and how she threw him out like a piece of trash. How she, just because he wasn't um, what she wanted him to be. On one hand, I do, I, I'm glad that she realized that and she felt such an empowering feeling within herself and knowing that she didn't really need a husband. So that was kind of nice. I also liked how, um, you know, the moments when she first had Alice and she was explaining motherhood and the love that she felt and the joy that she felt, I definitely could relate to that. So I thought that was really nice. But 
I just, I, I couldn't believe when he was in the hospital, she didn't even want to see him. She didn't want to talk to him. She was so like crawling out of her skin to avoid him. She just didn't care. She was so heartless. And then to get mad at Sylvie for wanting to care and not taking her side. And I just, it's, it's so immature. It's so immature to expect someone else to live their life in a way for you so that you can be happy. When in reality, you have to make yourself happy. You can't rely on other people. You can't rely on relationships. You can't rely on the actions of someone else. You can't change somebody else just to make yourself happy. So that was an interesting um, theme or revelation throughout the book. And I really loved how William and Sylvie really fell in love with each other for who they were. I mean, Sylvie loved him unconditionally for exactly where he was in his life. And they were, it was such a nice, refreshing type of romantic element to read because, you know, nothing, it wasn't perfect at all. I mean, she loved him at his worst, worst uh, place and she still saw him. And that was really, really nice. Um, you know, and by the, as we get toward the end of the book, when we realize that Sylvie has come down with terminal cancer, you know, I think she really described William's reaction so well. Um, Sylvie had such a beautiful, uh, like realization within herself. And when she realized that William was going to be okay, I mean, it was beautiful. I absolutely loved the character of Sylvie. She was, I, I felt really connected to her. I felt like I saw a lot of myself in her. And I really enjoyed um, that part of the story, Sylvie's part of the story especially. I really loved Sylvie's relationship with her dad and how the author really just highlighted the personality of Charlie who we, at first we just think him to be a drunk. We think him to be like an irresponsible drunk, but in reality he was such a kind, sweet person. And um, after he passed away so suddenly to see the response from the funeral and all the people that came out just saying what a wonderful, kind person he was. So it was a nice testament about, you know, his success. And you don't have to be successful in order to be loved. And you can, people will love you for the light that you have within you and the kindness that you show. So I really, really liked how she did that as well. So Overall, I, you know, I, I did like the book because it made me think about a lot of different things. It made me go inside myself to figure out why I was so irritated at Julia and, you know, why would that cause such a strong reaction with me? So really enjoyed the book, you guys. If you like relationships about siblings and uh, exploring that part of it, then I think you might like this. Um, but if you're thinking there's going to be a huge amount of plot, there really wasn't. And, uh, it, but it was good, you know, it was pretty good. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy the video. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below if you've read this book and I will talk to you guys soon.